Hello and welcome to Service Nerd. In today's video, we're going to be looking at some of the ways that we can send an email from ServiceNow using Flow Designer. Hi and welcome back. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why am I doing another Flow Designer video and will you stop with the Flow Designer videos already? Well, I'm not going to stop and I'm not even going to apologize for it. At the minute, I'm enjoying Flow Designer and I'm enjoying the, the new features I find on almost a daily basis that makes my life a bit easier. And that really is quite surprising coming from someone that took so long to adopt form designer rather than right click and configure form layout. So before I completely derail myself, um, let's get back on track. So today we're going to look at three different ways that you can create um, or send emails from Flow Designer. And those are and we'll go more um, into these as we go through. Email action, notification action, and creating an event. So I've already done a video on creating a custom um, action uh, that triggers an event. So if you haven't watched that, check that out. Um, I don't know, I'll put one of those annoying cards up. So check, check that out. Um, there is another way you can create an event. That one was more around how you create a custom action, trigger the event, but there's a simpler way of doing that as well. So. Without further delay, uh, let's crack on. Okay, so the first one up is quite simply send email action. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to um, ServiceNow. So this instance is my PDI, it is on San Diego. If uh, anyone's not yet seen San Diego, then I'll be absolutely amazed. Um, if you seriously haven't yet seen anything, um, I've done a couple of videos on those. Um, check out my videos. I might put another annoying card in the top right. However, um, we're going to go to Flow Designer. So we would select this. It looks lovely. Can't get over it. Go to Flow Designer. Um, I've already created or launched Flow Designer, and I've created a very, very, very simple test flow for the purpose of this um, video. So as we can see, um, we're going to be using this one throughout, but this is on the incident record and it's just when the short description changes. Again, why would you do that? You wouldn't, but I'm going to do it just so I can show you this, right? So that's our trigger. So the first one is quite simply, if we go into action, we type email, we get send email. So this one, I'm guessing if you've been using Flow Designer, this, this one you'll be used to, this one you will have seen before. So this allows us to, um, the actions here, we can pick the target record. So I'm gonna select the incident record, it defaults to the table. The two is mandatory, so I can, uh, I don't know, hard code something in if I really want to. Or I could say it's the assigned two. Perhaps we'll do the assigned two, yeah? So the subject, we could take the subject, we could quite um, easily do as we did there. We could take the short description of, um, the incident. So we could do that, or we could simply just type in test. Okay, so that's what we'll do. And that's done. Okay, so in order to trigger that, we can click save, uh, we can go um, and update the record, and it'll send an email out. Now, I don't think I'm going to do that because the result is going to be quite boring. You're just going to uh, see an email that's sent and it's going to waste some video time, right? So I'm not going to do it. You just have to trust me. Service now have an action there. It's going to work. Um, I've mentioned this in one of my videos before. Um, and when I don't really like this approach and I'll tell you why. Um, and again, I've mentioned this before. I don't really like this approach because if I'm an admin of an instance, I don't want to have to go and look in different places to find out where a notification is. And this is like the old school, um, the old legacy workflow. I never liked the, the email action in there either. Um, because if I'm an admin, I want to go to one table and I want to see everything there. I don't want to go hunting around for, I don't know, workflow or flow designer or notification table. So I don't tend to use this approach, but it is there and this is one approach. So that is the send email action in flow designer. Okay, so next one is the send notification action. So we're back here in our test flow that I used previously. And this time I'm gonna go for action as we did before. And I'm gonna type in notification, okay? So now we have a send notification action, right? Which you may or may not have seen before. So here again, the same as before, we can select the record. 
gives us the table. But now we have this mandatory notification field. So in here, we can then select a number of choices. Where does it get this list from? Where's this coming from? Well, we're going to pick incident priority raise. It gets this list. This is a list of all the notifications that have a, um, a send when um, equals triggered. So let's go and look at that notification. So I'm hopping onto the notification table. Uh, we're going to look at priority raised. Uh, by the way, I loaded this um, previously. It just doesn't magically come on the notification table because it knows I'm looking at it, right? just in case. Priority raised. Um, so this is the notification. We're going to go into this. So we've got this on when to send uh, tab. We've got this send when field, right? Which we've all seen this before when the record is inserted or updated or when an event is fired. Now, I've done a video on um, firing an event through a script action. I mentioned it before. Um, and we're going to talk about um, an event in a, in a minute on the on point three. But this triggered, we may not have seen much, um, or at least we've never had a use for it or delved into it. But what this means is when it's set to trigger, that means that we can then select it from this action with the flow designer. So it's kind of like ServiceNow, and this has been around for a few instances, uh, a few versions of ServiceNow. But they've obviously listened or taken note and gone, well, um, We'll store all the notifications in the notification table, and then we can reference them on the flow and pick them up from there. Okay, therefore, we don't need to use that email action. Now, there are times where you use one over the other, and there's pros and cons, of course, of each, um, which we can go over, to, uh, over towards the end. Personally, this is the approach that I would always favor because, again, as an admin, it would be nice if everything was in the same place. I haven't got to go hunting around. So, again, this is nice and simple. Send notification. It ties the two up. Um, but yeah, big fan of this. Uh, go check it out. And uh, last but not least for this video is creating a um, event which will trigger a notification. So there's a few different components we need for that. We obviously need the flow. We'll use the same one we've been playing with. Um, we need an event which we trigger from the flow. And then we're going to create a notification which essentially catches that um, that event that we created. Now, I did mention in the, the video earlier that I've already done um, a video a few months ago around creating or triggering an event using a flow action. So that's creating a custom action um, just to trigger an event. There is a simpler way of doing that, and I'm going to show you this um, now. So the first thing we need to do is go and create an uh, event. So we're going to go to event. So the, thing, the first thing we do is we create it. Well, it's essentially, we're registering that event. So I'm going to go to the events registry table. I'm going to click on new, and we're going to call it something silly like test um, event email. And we're going to do this on incident. So remember, our flow is on incident, and so too is our notification. And we're going to say it's fired by, um, I can't remember the name of the flow, but let's be called and it's called test demo email flow. And then we'll do add in a description to just send, um, send notification to the caller. Now, I'm going to stop here for, for a second and, and just um, throw, throw some remarks in here. When creating an event or registering an event, if you will, uh, we've got fired by in description. Um, too often do I see people have created events and not added anything in here. Please, please, please just add in what fires the event and add in a little description. Admins will absolutely love you for it. Um, okay, <laughs> hopefully uh, point taken. Um, so I've created my, my event. I'm now gonna go back to Flow Designer and I'm going to go to Action and in here, we're going to create a record. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a record. So we've registered our event. We're going to create a record on this table, the events log table. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to type in that table. I know it's called assist events because I've been doing this a while. So I just know that. We need to add in the name. So what's the name of the event that we're triggering? Um, I'll go and get that in a second because I'm old and I've completely forgot. 
we need to add in the table. So that's the table the event is triggering on. So what did we register that? I know that's incident because I made a point of saying incident. Um, instance. So instance is the sys ID of the record that we're passing in. So we're running this on this table, but what's the sys ID we're, we're running it against? What's the record we're running it against? We're going to use palm one and palm two. And I'll explain those um, in a second. Let's fill in the name first. This is the name of our event. So we come back. I should have copied it, shouldn't I really? Um, events registry. That's it. Flow designer. That's the name. Table. I've just put in incident for now. Um, we could take that from the record itself. Um, I'm just showing that you, you can, um, I guess, free text it in if you want to. The instance, I'm going to get it this way. So this will be the sys ID of that record. So sys ID of the trigger record, which in our case is an incident. Um, and palm one and palm two. So these are, I guess, it, it bits of information we can pass through, which in this instance from the notification, we can pick those parameters up and we can use them. So for example, we can use palm one inside the email body if we wanted to. We could use palm two um, as who we're sending the notification to. So let's do that. So palm one, we're just going to hard code in with some test stuff. And palm two, we're going to pick the caller. All right. So we're going to go to our trigger record and we're going to pick the caller. Now I could pass anything I like in there, right? But I'm, I want to make it useful. So we're going to select done. We're going to save. And we may as well activate it while we're here as well. So that's our flow piece done. We've created the event. We've created the flow. The next thing we need to do is skip over to notification. Uh, we click here. Let's create a new one. And we're going to create our, our notification. So we're going to call it, I always, I can never think of good names, so I'll just call them test. Um, on the... Uh, table, incident table, when to send. So we've already looked at this um, previously uh, today, but we're going to say event is fired. And we're going to look for the event that we just created. How is it that I've already forgotten what it's called? I'm sure I, I called it test something, didn't I? All right. Ah, test event email. Let me check. <laughs> test event email. Right. Okay. So I've now selected the event. So when the event is fired, meaning when the flow um, triggered it, this event, what will happen? What will it contain? Let's just put in test. Who will receive it? Let me just click save to that. And we can say who will receive will be event palm one, uh, palm two. So if we go back to the flow just to look at that. So palm two. So this is the event, palm2 contains the caller on the notification. Hey, look at that. Event palm2 contains the recipient. So who we're going to send it to. The, we've also got it over here. Look, event palm1 um, contains recipients. So you could send it to two people, I guess, if you wanted it to. Um, but we can also, within the, the subject or the, or the body of the email, we can get at those parameters, as I've mentioned, which I think is probably for another video. This is more about showing you how we can trigger it from Flow Designer. Let's save that. And let's go and give it a test. So what we're going to do now is go to our incident. And we're going to pick this one. And I'm going to add to the subject. Um, I don't know, favorite thing. Point to note here, right, is we've got a few moving parts. The flow is going to run. The event will get triggered into the events log. The notification will then get fired from that event. When debugging this, um, and this is something I see quite a lot, is if you get to the point where the email doesn't fire or it appears like it hasn't fired, check the person that you are sending it to, in this case our caller, 
has got an email address. Many times have I seen people, including myself, debugging for a while only to realize there's no email address um, added to that user. Okay, it happens. I've been there. I want to say it now. Anyway, let's save this. Record saved. We should be able to, let's follow the trail. So flow is triggered, um, or flow is run, sorry. We go into the events log to see if our event has been triggered. There we go. It says test stuff. I can't code that in. This is the sysid of our caller. It's been processed. Now we go to the emails and check on outbound emails. And here we go. David Miller has received um, the email pointlessly saying test. Um, I say pointlessly. <laughs> it's all adding to the demo. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, the, the last version of um, uh, how to send emails from Flow Designer, and that is um, by using an event. Okay, so I hope you found this useful and enjoyed the video, which although I think enjoyed perhaps a, a bit of a stretch, but I hope you've liked it anyway. If you are new around here and you haven't yet subscribed, please consider subscribing. It makes all the difference to me. Um, it keeps me motivated to, to continue doing something. If you are already subscribed, then a massive thank you to everyone that drops um, a like, a thumbs up, or puts some comments in. It's much appreciated. Anyway, until the next time, stay safe.